Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus sorts out the group and gives individual feedback to group members. Filmed on the 3rd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay, now we think we've got everyone right, and we might not. So some of you have been quiet, so some of you we don't, haven't got the chance to get to know you in, in any way, but this is all based upon my feelings from you. So when i up there with the camera, I get to feel all of you, where you're at, what's going on. And so this assessment has been based upon my feelings about where you're at. Does that make sense? Now, one thing I put to you is this. If the person teaching about God's truth and God's love feels you're at a certain place, my suggestion to you would be to sincerely consider where that person thinks you're at. But you don't have to. You can totally ignore where I think you're at if you want. And you can totally uh, ignore my assessment and tell me that I'm wrong and all those kind of things, that's fine. But to be honest with you, I feel quite strongly that if you don't see where you're at right now, there's a high likelihood you're not going to see where you're at for many years to come. So I, I'd suggest that you think about this. Okay, now the first group of people that I'm going to list is, uh, are the group of people that are um, who I would like to see present, if you would like to come, to today's talk that I'll be giving about forgiveness and repentance concepts. Does that make sense? Now, this group has been divided into two sections. One is the group of people that we do feel a developing desire for you to love other people. In other words, there is a developing sense inside of you that you want to love other people. And then there's, they will go through the second group of in this, who will be in this group. They will be ones who we feel will benefit from the conversation, right? but who we don't feel a strong desire or, or any real developed desire. In fact, for the majority of it, we feel no desire to actually uh, be loving to other people. We feel that much of what you think is loving is based upon codependent addictions with other people. And we've divided this group into two. There are 26 people in the first part of the group and there's 13 in the second. Okay? Okay, now, as I say your names, if you could put up your hand so that we've just made sure that we've identified the right person. Because <laughs> sometimes we, we sort of uh, bit out with our names, but in terms of the person I've got no trouble with, it's the name and whether the name aligns with that person. So Bruce and Kelly, you're in this evening's group. Okay. Uh, so this is all the ones that are in this evening's group and who we feel have some desire to love others. Sherry, where are you? Over there. No, this Sherry here. Tess, where are you? There you go. Lani, uh, over here. Yes. Uh, Catherine, yes. Laura and Alan. So, Alan, where's Laura today? There. Uh, Rob. Yep. Anto and Jane. Yep. Jennifer. Where's Jennifer? Yes. Nikki and Peter. Uh, we put you together, but not together. Um, Elvira. Yep. Justin. Linda. Yep. Michael. Pierre, yep, Julie, yep, uh, Max, right there, yep, Carmel, yep, Mel, yep, Rebecca and Donald, Donald's over there, and Rebecca is over there, both at opposite corners. Brenda and Brandon, B and B, and that's the list. Now. These are the persons who will be invited to help attend today, but we don't feel yet that there's a very strong desire in you to love others. So this is this, the, the, these are 13 more people. 
Uh, Dennis, yep. Ange, Griffiths, yep. Glennis, yeah, yeah, there. Rosa, yes. Jada, yes. Nick, Sandra, Sandra, yes. Surprise, hey, Sandra. Phoebe and Daniel, yes. John and Kadira, yes. Michaela, yes. And Pam, yes. Okay, now who have we missed? For those of you who have missed, if you can just put up your hands. Uh -huh. Just put up your hands, all the people we've missed. I just want to make sure that I've... I've Uh, you're not in this group, Seth, so you're assisting. Uh, yep. Yep, we haven't made any mistakes. The rest of you, I don't feel, uh, those of you who had your hand up there, I don't feel a strong desire in you to love. Or even a, a desire, a... a, a even a feeling from you that the next talk will benefit you about forgiveness and repentance. Does that make sense? So um, I would have a think about that if I was you, but it's up to you what you do with that. Now I'm happy to answer your questions, those of you while you're here, as to why I feel that way. So I'm happy if you, you do have a question about it. I'm happy to give you your answers about that. Marco. Yeah, thanks. I just want to know where I'm... Uh, just wait for the mic. Is it on? Yes, it's on. And try yep. again. Hello? Yep. Yeah, just uh, would like to know where I'm at, like if that's okay. Yeah, Marco, we feel that you're self-reflective and in fact a little more self-reflective than many in the group. However, the desire to love other people is not there. We feel that the main reason why you're here is because you want to improve your personal life and have a better personal life, but, but as yet there's not a strong developed desire to actually be loving to other people. Does that make sense? And we also feel quite strongly that, that it's almost like God doesn't exist to you at this point. And that's a, so, so you're very closed down to actually developing a relationship with God. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Do you feel those things that we're saying? Oh, in or? regards to God, yeah. 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 Being sort of you know, grown up with different beliefs, it's, yeah. I find it difficult, yeah. We feel with regard to your personal desires for growth, which I do believe you have, you would be better benefited by reflecting upon the material we've already presented to you over this week because you have quite heavy addictions with other people yes. and, and you desperately want them met. And, and this is preventing you from being reflective about your relationship with God or deeper issues with regard to love. So just in regards to reflect all the information back and just deconstruct the facade and yes or so you do, if you listen to what I just said remember I said to you that you do have a desire to be self-reflective about your own life but only as it pertains to a selfish desire for be, to be happy for yourself does that make sense yes it does can you feel that in you? It's yeah. like it, there's not a strong desire for you to just be loving to other people to give them the gift of your love. Because you, at this stage, I don't know if you even believe it's a gift when you give somebody your love. Well, I'm not sure. I've probably been misled in regards to giving people stuff. Yeah, I feel you give people stuff, yeah. but it's not a real soul-based feeling of love that you're you're sharing with them. It's a it's a instead it's a often it's a demand, a codependent demand. That you're placing upon somebody else. I wasn't aware that make sense? of that yeah. fully. Yep. But yeah. So we feel what would it, for yourself, if you stayed for the next day and a half, you'd be best going back over material yep. that we've already presented about developing the will to love, you know, strengthening your will to love. 
and also about looking at the facade and the addictions that you have in play in your life. And yeah. you've got a great opportunity. You've, cho you've chosen to go around Australia, haven't you, as a trip? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got a great opportunity there to look at your opportunity to love as you travel. Do you know what I mean? And to try to apply those things. Yeah. I've got a lot of addictions. Yeah. That yeah. I was facing in Melbourne. I wanted to be alone. I, yeah. I fear being alone. Yeah, the, the, my, our, our feelings are that you, you feel quite hurt and you really want to spend a lot of time away from people. But that's, that's more of a desire to preserve yourself than a desire to be loving. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, we've yeah. done everything. Yeah. Now, for all of you that I give feedback to, please be aware that we're not doing any of this to punish you or anything. We just feel that you're not ready for the next bit of material we want to share. You can always look at it on YouTube. Right? But we just feel that there are areas that you need to spend. We've only got you for one, more, one and a half more days. And if you could use that time, that one and a half more days, to be a lot more self-reflective than, than you have been, that would be fantastic. And help, help, have a look at what you do in your personal life that, and see where you're actually at and ask yourself some basic questions about the will to love, the desire to love, and so forth. Okay? Anyone else would like to have a go? And if we go up the back, it's... Um... Maxine? Maxine, that's right, Maxine. Yep. Yeah, I agree with you, Jesus. Um, I avoid people at all cost. <laughs> to, yeah. To connect to them it frightens me. I just feel... That's I've exactly like that what we feel from you. Since childhood, so yeah. yeah. What happens too is that because you have that fear, there are quite a lot of spirits who attack you, and that cause you to pull yourself down as well. Um, but it also causes you to become very insular and withdrawn, and uh, and this also prevents you from having a desire to love yourself or other people. So our suggestion again is to go back over the material. To look at what's happened, you know, look at the areas over the material where you, you've, you've, the addiction you've entered is the addiction of withdrawal. Does that make sense? With, like, yeah. Yeah. And withdrawing from people. And, and if you think about it, um, you also have your child here, is yeah. that correct? Yeah. yeah. There is a large amount of codependent addiction between yourself and your child. Yeah, I try to. Stay indoors as much as possible and avoid interactions. Yeah. 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 So um, our suggestion would be to have a look at what you are trying to get from your child that you're not getting in your day-to-day -day life. But what I'll say, for all of you who, who we haven't invited, by the way, there is a, a need for you. And by the way, for many of the people who we've invited that have no desire to love, but we feel you, you will benefit from the discussion, you also fall into this category where we feel that there is a deep need in you to be reflective about do you really want to love other people or do you just want to be loved? And I feel many of you have been attracted to the principles of God's truth because you just want to be loved but not because you actually want to become a loving person who loves others. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else who wants to ask? If we come down to Pamela. I am beginning to realise just how rageful I have always been. Pamela, stop, stop, stop. You're just saying what you think we want to hear, and, and no. this is... No, yeah. And, and this is a very pro big problem for you. A very big problem for you. Right? The reality is you're a very slippery customer <laughs> when it comes to accepting truth because you work out, you've got a very clever intellect, and you work out what people around you want from you, and you give them whatever they want. Right? And this is, a, this is a bad habit you've gotten into, a, ter a really bad habit. And this is why we feel you really need to have a good look at the facade and the addictions in your life and, and see yourself and what you do. Because it, there's no, like, the real Pamela that God created you to be, she is buried under a mountain of, of belief systems that are about 
you know, trying to get approval, attention and a lot of other emotions, including sexual feelings, from other people so that she can avoid, avoid the pain of the hurt child. And, and yeah, honestly, there's a lot of work for you to do there. And in the five years or so that we've known you, we haven't observed any work in that regard. So, so that's something for you to contemplate. Like why it is that after hearing lots and lots of divine truth, and I know there's a feeling in you that you love the external truth. I know that. But there's not a feeling in you that you want to practice it. You just love hearing it. You love, you love, there's a saying in the Bible that applies to many of you. You love being tickled by the truth. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, oh, nice pleasant sensation that I get when I hear the truth. But you don't actually want to engage the actual um, development of it in your day-to-day -day life because if you did, um, it would require quite a lot of significant adjustments. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Um, if we go to Rita on this side and Kay on this side down the front here. Rita. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. Yeah, okay. Yeah, can you give me feedback? I think I've already this week given you all yeah. the feedback you okay. need. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, you're lucky to be here today because you had so much rage towards me the, uh, that night at dinner and, um, and you were very unpleasant. And there was no, even when I pointed that out to you, there was no sadness or repentance about it whatsoever. You, you felt completely justified in your rage. And, and even if I'm saying something that's completely false, there is no reason for you to have that amount of rage towards me. And the reality is what I was saying wasn't false either, by the way, but you can believe it to be. But there was just huge amounts of rage. We talked about it with you privately the next day and it was only some little bit of spark of humility that day that, that enabled myself and Mary to keep you here for the last few days. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so I would look at the, the, this really self-righteous feeling that you have that you're right. You're right, everyone else around you is wrong. And there's quite a number of people here who have that feeling that you're right and everyone else is wrong. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, well, you can hold I, that mic right close to I, the transmit. I agree with you. But yeah, I, for you, Kay, can that. I just give you a bit of background? For you, Kay, we feel very strongly a rage towards God and a rage towards love. Like, you, you feel like you've been hurt in love and... and and also hurt by God in that process. And until you allow yourself to work through this level of anger that you have in those two areas, and you have the ability to do it, so you don't need to worry about that. I feel, we feel quite strongly that you have the ability to do it. You will not desire to love other people and you will not desire to have a relationship with God until you address those two emotions. May I, may I tell you what my rage is with God? No, I know what it's about with God, and you don't need to tell the rest. Yeah, okay. I know what it is, and and all I'm suggesting to you is that you just need to let yourself go through it. At the moment, there is a very strong feeling in you of justification of it. You believe you're right, and this is a big problem that many of you have with God, is that when you get angry with God, you believe you're right. God's never done anything to harm you. God's done, given you a whole heap of gifts most of which you have yet to even appreciate, and yet you still believe that you've got reasons to be angry with God. And to be honest, the anger with God is just a slippery way of you getting away from the fact that you're really angry with your parents and you need to address it, and you don't want to address it, how angry you are with them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, say Ivana, thank you. Um, like I said yesterday, I, I know that I've been really resistive and I know that I don't have a desire to really love people. 
Yeah, um, can I just make a few comments to you? Yeah. Um, one thing where I love about you is that you are quite self-reflective and this hopefully will help you in your future to be self-reflective about where you're at is a great thing. I agree with your statements about God and also not loving people. There is a strong feeling in you, you want them to love you. Yep. And, and when they don't love you, you get really upset about it and, and then you don't feel like any sense of progress after that point, of course, because you're getting upset. So uh, my suggestion to you is to really think about that. Use this self This you, you do have a, a lovely quality of being able to analyse yourself pretty accurately, right? Yep. And this is a very good tool that you've developed over your life. There's many here who haven't developed that tool. But, but don't justify the hurt you feel all the time. This is where you're having your biggest problem. You, yeah. you keep justifying your hurt rather than seeing your hurt as acting out of harmony with love. Yeah, yeah. I realised that a little while ago um, some stuff had happened and I realised that I was just... I just keep creating... Um, drama in my life yep. and like I think Mary was saying before just living in the drama of the hurt all the time and stuff yeah so. what it does is it actually what you do in your life is you often create the drama to validate to yourself that it's good to continue living in your hurt in other words you use it as a process of reinforcing the false education of yourself yep. so your parents and particularly your mother educated yourself about love a certain way and now what you're doing is it's almost like you're taking actions and and holding on to beliefs that educate yourself falsely you're not prepared to give up these false you know, this false education and start to educate yourself truly. Like, for example, God loves you. You know, God wants to have a relationship with you. You can be loving. You, uh, your hurt can be released. These are positive education that you need to start doing with yourself yeah. to help you get over this hump that you have. So it's great that you're self-reflective, but... But but I've got to be... But you're... Yeah. It's almost like you're enabling your own hurt... Like, and, and giving yourself a justification for living in it for the rest of your life. And I've seen people do this for many, many years, Ivana. You're a young person who has a lot of potential. And um, if you keep doing this, you'll be 30, 40, 50 still doing the same thing. And you'll grow up to be like some of these women in our audience who have done this for most of their life, who got hurt in their 20s and, and decided to reinforce their hurt in the same way you've decided to do. Yep. Yep. Um, can I just ask a question um, sure. with you saying that um, my mum has been the main... Uh, what did you say, sorry, about the beliefs? Your mum has an emotion in her that, she, that her hurt is paramount. Everyone should live around it. Yep. Everybody should do everything needed to, to support it and all those kind of things. And, and so when she gets hurt, she then believes that this hurt is real, that it's true, that, it, that it's not done, created by herself, but it's created by other people. And, and then she has perpetrated a lot of hurt on other people as a result of those beliefs. And so I just do exactly the same. She taught you to do this, yep. yes. So what I'm suggesting to you is she taught you to, to basically say, my hurt's always going to be there it's always going to be real i don't shouldn't have to feel it everyone around me should make it go away yep. and uh, and then there's a lot of stuff with men of course that yep. she believes about men as well to do that that has entered you and then caused you to feel this way yep yeah okay thank you yep pleasure alan up the back uh, who was over this side next uh, there wasn't anybody yet selected so can we go to grant up the back thanks Alan. andrew andrew sorry yeah, can you tell me where I'm at, please? Um, Andrew, your main problem is one of arrogance. You are quite extremely arrogant, actually, where you believe yourself to know so many things and believes, you believe so many things, and yet it covers over a deep feeling of inferiority in you. Be but because of this desire, your main addiction is to have other people believe things about you that are not what you even believe about yourself. 
Does that make sense? Yes. So we feel if you, if you could go back over the material that we presented this week about the facade, you have one or two very strong facades. You don't have hundreds of them, just one or two very strong facades that you're holding on to for dear life and, and because they cover over quite a lot of hurt. And uh, as a result, there's, there's very little desire in you to know what you do to other people when, even when you're sitting with them in terms of the projection coming out of you. Does that make sense? Yes. With regard to your relationship with God, um, there is no desire in you at this point that we can feel for you to have one. So a lot of your desire for, uh, to be involved with divine truth has been about you, you're, you feel it's wonderful discovering everything about the universe because it makes you feel quite safe and in the universe. You know, it makes you feel quite like, oh, this is a wonderful universe, not, not a bad universe like I thought before. Um, but, but, it's, but you've yet to feel much for the creator of it. Do you, do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it would benefit you immensely to start to ponder about, well, if this universe is so beautiful and you're starting to see its beauty, if it's so beautiful, what, how beautiful do you think the creator of it is? And how much does that creator want to have a relationship with you? Uh, so uh, our suggestion to you is to ponder about the things you've already learned this week about those things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. Do you, you can say whatever you feel. <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess. Um, You're a bit shocked. No, no, not at all. No, no. Um, divine truth is fairly new to me, so I yep. had my beliefs um, of twelve months ago. I was total evolution. Um, yeah. God, yeah. you know, doesn't exist. We basically came from uh, the Darwinism right. yep. theory, that type of thing. So, yep. um, the discovery of divine truth. Uh, with personal things that happened through my life, you know, whether it was for a reason or not, um, you know, like I've just taken to it and yep. it is very new to me and um, that's agree. probably an arrogant approach as well, I guess, in regards that, well, I'm only new at this, so just, you know, let it be what it is and the like, eh? but um, thanks very much for yeah. yourselves, uh, Cornelius Mary, you know, for the presentation and the yeah, like. Yes, pleasure. I sort of, um, when you didn't read my name out, I actually was glad... Why was that? Oh, because I can go go back down home and, you know, I've got a week off and just go and feed my addictions, which I think I've mentioned to you once yeah. at dinner time the other night as well. I, but, yeah, having said that... That's um, what we sort of feel from you about the week. There's yeah. sort of a reluctant engagement with the week. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, that, and that's an indication that you've probably see a, a lot of people in the first year they get very attracted to divine truth because of the external truths right and you have been attracted because of a lot of these external truths and you've also seen the potential of it affecting your life in terms of helping your your personal life um, but but the part of working through addictions and working through facades and those kind of things that part looks a bit hard for you at the moment and, uh, and also this part of developing a relationship with a God that you've never had a belief in is going to be quite difficult. It's going to be needing to work your way through some emotions about why you've never had a belief in God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so just, just look at this as an opportunity to, to address some of those emotions that are outstanding there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Um, we were over a grant. Yes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yesterday we had that exchange. We did. And um, from that, I just wonder if you could sort of give me some feedback on what I felt from it because I've got needy emotions to men who I respect, which is you being one. Yeah. And what I didn't realise was there's this real anger to my father. Yes, very pre present in that engagement I had with you yesterday. So... I apologise for... No, that's okay. Yeah. I, I realise what's going on. But what I would like to put to you is that, is that there, because of that, there is a deep reluctance to examine what I said. Like, and this is what I find with many men who have that emotion with their dad, is when I start talking, mm. they, they are automatically are wanting to find all the reasons under the sun of why, they should, why, why this is a heap of crap that AJ is saying, right? And... And that's the feeling that was driving a lot of your, um, what I would classify as resistance yesterday, argumentative resistance yesterday, actually. 
And it's a feeling in your soul about that. So, so this is a feeling where you, it, it, the feeling we get from you is a very strong feeling of wanting to believe every, you're, that you're a good person without looking at the things that are stopping you from your progress of loving others and loving God or, or engaging in a relationship with God. Does that make sense? Yes. So yeah. we, we feel that if you could allow yourself to just, just feel about the feelings that you feel about you or, or that you want to feel about yourself that you often don't get to feel, you know, mm -hmm. and this is where you're engaging in your addictions with men and women in those two areas. So again, we feel the program up to this point, if you could go over that program, that would mm -hmm. benefit you more than hearing more is what we believe. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yep. Um, just so that, that anger with my father, it just sort of appeared. I thought, oh, geez, I never know, knew that existed. That's Yep. So I, I f that's my next port of call. Would you think? Or? Well, not necessarily. No. There, there's emotions with both your mother and your father. With your father, there is this rage. But with your mother, there is a lot of codependent addiction, like in terms of wanting things from women, which, which was what you got angry about, remember? So, so mm. if you think in our discussion, there were two things that were highlighted. One was highlighted by your emotional response, and that was your response to your dad. And the second thing that's highlighted was the, was the fact that you were very resistive to hearing the truth about your, your feelings with women. You get oppressed by women frequently, um, and often you, at, the, at this stage you believe that pandering to them is the best way out of that, but, but it's not. Yeah. What, what's the best way out of that? is for Grant to become his real self. And his real self isn't going to pander to any single woman at all. And the irony is, there will be your, this, will, this will strongly attract your soulmate if you become like a man in that regard, who doesn't just pander to the whims of other women. Yes. Yep. I got, thank yep. you very much for that. Yep. Um, this is good, guys. Uh, this is the first time I've felt some actually openness. <laughs> Uh, if we come, if we just limit it to the people who have not been invited in today first, so we can answer the other questions as we go. Um, if we can go to you, Sue, and then straight behind you to Gary, and on this side, if we can go to, if we can go to the the two, it's uh, uh, sorry, girls, yep. Yeah, Megan and Carol. So if we go to one of the two of you. So start yes, with you, yes. sir. Yes, please. I would really appreciate some feedback. Jesus, yep, you're not you. on both lists. Bit of a shock for you. Yep. 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 And um, to be honest, the reason why is because we feel I've already had a conversation with you about repentance and forgiveness at your home. And, uh, and you have no idea what I talked about, basically, still. So you need to go back to that conversation that I've given you privately and you need to have a good look at it because you, you do not understand it at all. In almost every statement that you've made during this uh, six days, you have tried to drag Michael into your statement in some way. And, and if you go back over the recordings of this, you will observe that. You've tried to get him in trouble every time you've made a comment. And this is not the actions of a person who has any idea about repentance. Because the reality is in your relationship, you have done far more harm to Michael than he's done to you. Right? And, and this is something that you do not wish to come to terms with. And, and in fact, the, while the um, talk today would benefit you greatly, the reality is I've already given it to you and you've already rejected it. So I, I can't give it again. You're going to have to watch it on the internet this time. Does that Thank make you. sense? Thank you very much. Yes. And also, so uh, with regard to your relationship with God, you are still feeling really hurt, and you are justifying, in a very similar way to what I've said to Ivana, you, you've become an older lady who's, who's justified this hurt for a long time, and you even, uh, you, you almost... Tell yourself over and over again that this hurt is present uh, and, and is real and it's all their fault. And, you, and this is not a desire to become more loving yourself. This is a desire for everyone around you to become more loving. Then you will. And I feel you've got things completely back to front. 
Yeah, I have. You're going to be waiting a long time if you wait for the rest of the world to become more loving before you do. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yep. You can see uh, we have not, uh, none of this has been based upon favouritism or anything else. It's just a complete analysis of where we feel you're at. Okay, who else? Where we were, oh, we were, oh, was it Carol? Carol. Yep, Carol. Um, I feel like most of what you've been saying applies to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that my huge avoidance of people in the world is about not really wanting to see what's going to be uncovered in me. Yep, yep. You, you are one of these girl, women that are um, pushed around a lot by angry women. And you almost, you've given up your will almost to these people and you pretty much do whatever they want you to do because you're afraid of them. But the problem with that is that there's no ethics in that. So that, that means that you finish up doing things to harm other people that are actually, that you feel pressured to do from others. Um, but, but it's because of your unwillingness to feel your fear of these kind of rageful women. And this is something that you need to address if you're ever going to make any real progress towards God or even towards your other half uh, or even any progress towards your real self. You are often terrified. Uh, you're more terrified of, of women than men, even though you've probably told yourself the other way around for a lot of I've your life. I've been aware that I can often get along with men a lot better. Yeah, yeah. So, so the reality is uh, these women greatly manipulate you and you don't have a strongly developed will to love other people because you go along with their manipulation. Yeah. By the way, uh, we had an interaction last night. Um, who was there? I think um, Carmel, you were there. Who else was there uh, across the road from me? It was Carmel. This is at dinner. It was myself and Mary. Carmel was there. Ah, oh, yes, Tess was there. And you remember Emma was on the side of me. Well, you, you girls watched, and bo both of you have been included in today's session, but to be honest with you, you watched me get attacked by another woman and, get a and another woman get angry with me, and you did nothing about it at all. Right? The other night uh, when Rita was angry with me, how many of you were involved in the conversation where I finished up talking to Rita? All of you watched me getting attacked by Rita. None, none of you did anything about it. Right. So, so can you see why the angry person finishes up getting their way? Because none of us stand up. None of us say that was wrong. None of us say that was pretty out of harmony with love. Right. So there's an issue there, isn't there, in terms of having the courage to stand up for love. That's a big issue in this entire group, having a courage to stand up for love. Where are we up to? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, so I'd just like some feedback. Please. Sorry, name again? Megan. Megan, that's right, yes. I'd just like some feedback, please, and some ideas about where to start to look at. Megan, you're a, you're a bit of a mixture, eh, between the very angry woman and the one who's led by very angry women. And there's not a strong desire in you, Megan, to, uh, to really be honest about whether you really want to love or not. Like... I feel you've been very attra attracted to divine truth for external reasons and also for the reason of uh, some of the selfish reasons I mentioned, the feeling that you want to progress yourself and these kind of things, but not because you want to love other people, not because you want to become a more loving person in your day-to-day -day life. And for that reason, we feel, like many of the others have already said, that you'd be better off going back over the material that we've already presented rather, rather than us presenting new material. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Um, if we come to, if we come down to Nada and across to um, Rene. Nada, this is nonsense. You've got to stop this stuff. You're having a big cry about, like it's all just facade stuff. You've got to stop this and you've got to be more honest with yourself. This is you just living in this uh, justified hurt that I was talking about with Ivana. 
you know, like we've had a number of interactions this week. You've done every interaction in addiction and I've told you and then the next interaction we had was completely in addiction. It's like you're not even, you can't even hear what I'm saying to you because all you want is a feeling from a man. That's all you want. I think you asked the question about soulmates and why you're not attracting soulmate, right? Last week I had a long discussion with a couple of women that you'll see a recording of and my suggestion is to have a look at that. But, but it's all because of this kind of stuff. You, you can't even hear the man. Or as long as the man gives you a feeling, you, you couldn't care what he said. He, you know, he could say you're a terrible person and as long as he makes you feel like you're not while he's doing it, you'll be fine. Like, that's how addicted you, you are to hearing from a man that everything's good and not, a, not hearing it, feeling it from him. As long as he has that feeling that he's less than you are, you're, you go up and have these interactions all the time with different men and it's just, like, honestly, it's not being, being self-reflective. And what, what we feel quite strongly for yourself is there's a deep need for you to be more self-reflective about what's really going on and a deep need for you to have a good look at this feeling that you have inside of you that you're really connected to your hurt. You're really connected to your hurt and you're not. You're not connected to your hurt. You're connected to this facade of hurt. Uh, Mary would like to probably add to that. <laughs> Nana, I would just add that often you have the tears and the crying <laughs> and it's almost a way that you let yourself off the hook a little bit. It's like you feel a, a sort of emotions in the moment that we discuss things with you. But they're not, um, they're not real and you sort of let yourself then feel that you're connected to something but I, I don't feel that that's happening and if you look at your life over the time that we've known you there hasn't been any great change no. so you know you're not really connecting in that way yeah I actually feel like I've degraded yeah but even that statement you don't know you, my feelings are that you've been pretty much the same the entire I've known you so I don't see a large degradation. Your path in life has been well established before we met you and as a result it's highly unlikely you've done anything different than you've always done to degrade your condition further. But, but um, there is this problem and, and that is you don't accurately see what's going on. And remember I said to Ivana one of the things that's going to help her is that she does accurately see what's going on. So, you know, this is going to be an issue for you. It, right, if we rewind right back to the first day, and I said in the opening talk, there was how we use our will and also whether we receive the truth, whether we receive God's truth, how much of a desire to receive God's truth emotionally is there. We don't feel a strong desire in those two areas and we certainly don't feel in you a strong desire for a relationship with God. You have a strong desire to enter a codependent addiction with a male so that he can meet most of your addictions. That's your only strong desire that we feel in you, that uh, your whole life is all, almost governed around it. Most of your sadness that you feel is all about it, about not having it. And, and it's all a facade. Does that make sense? It's not getting to the hurt. Yeah. Make you. sense? Thank yep. you. Um, who are we on this side? Yeah, Brene. Uh, who are, uh, where are we on this side? We haven't got one chosen yet. Let's go to Trent on this side. So, Renee. Hi. It's How been um, a real eye-opening uh, time for me here. Yeah. I feel as though I was my facade and I didn't have a desire to, to have a look at anything else. I still don't really have much of a desire. Yep, um, I agree. So we were, we were a little confused about why you came. Do you know why you came? Well, I actually thought um, prior to coming yep. that I, I was completely deluded. Um, yep. I really thought I had a desire for God, um, but this week has showed me that I really don't. Um, no, you know, we felt that you were uh, you were impelled to come by some spirits who just wanted to have some nice feelings from being with a group of people who were looking at themselves. 
rather than you personally wanting to look at yourself. Um, so that was our feeling. And to be honest with you, we very rarely feel Renee. Uh, Renee is buried under this like, life of living in addiction, which you are always engaging. And uh, there's been a large amount of damage done to you to, to get you into this condition. But, but at some point you're going to need to develop the actual will, you know, the soul-based will to get out of it. And, and we feel quite strongly that at this point you're attracted to God's truth uh, for a number of different reasons which I won't go into, but, but there's not a strong desire to get out of codependent addiction or, or addictions with, with substances and people. Um, there's not, not a strong desire to do that or to, to look at what's really going on. So again, many of you have grown up in an environment where you've almost been taught that using your will was a bad thing, you know? And, and so you become very easily influenced to, by others to use your will how they want you to use it. And in your case, Renee, you're often using your will how spirits want you to use it. Yeah. Because they get a lot of things from you in that process. Mm. So it's almost like you've given up the use of your will to somebody else. So our advice to you would be, have a good look at how you're using your will and ask yourself every time you go to do something, is this really what I want or am I just being manipulated again by somebody to do this thing? Yeah. So would it, um, since I've been here, I've been attempting to connect to God and every time I attempt that connection, I just feel so much fear. Yeah, honestly, um, how many of the rest of you, every time you connect to, try to connect to God, you just feel fear? Is it many of you feel that? No? Not? Well, see, those people who do feel that are usually getting very heavied, very manipulated by spirits who don't want you to have a relationship with God. Does that make sense? So if every time you attempt to connect to God, all you do is feel fear, there's a high likelihood that you're just getting very heavily manipulated by spirits who don't want you to have a relationship with God. So, and all you're afraid of is their threats, their blackmail, their abuse, their, you know, their desire to treat you violently. So do, do I continue to do that and then... Do you? Continue to, because it's all about um, every time I focus on God and feel... Can I say to you, look, the reason why you are not progressing is because you do everything that spirits tell you to do. And, and you obviously have a reason for doing that. The key for you is to find the reason. And while we might know it, unless you find it, you're not going to change. So my suggestion to you would be find the reason why you give up your will and do anything that anybody else around you suggests. And the problem with me making a suggestion to you is it's highly likely you'll do what I suggest. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to w learn how to find what you want to do inside of yourself, right? Yeah, and then do that. But at the moment, you're just, you're just doing whatever spirits say to you to do. Yeah? Now, we've, just got, we've only got a few more minutes to go, so we were at Trent. Uh, if I'm honest, I feel I've opened up more this week and had more self-awareness. Than, I agree. Than I probably had in the last, or than I have had in the last three or four years. I agree. Um, I've, yeah, I've found the last couple of days in particular. I've, I was, um, Please don't feel, those of you who um, haven't been read out in the list, that you haven't made any progress at all, because we feel that during the week you have made some progress. And in fact, most of you have made some progress because you've at least started to make some self awareness and so forth. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I just yeah, resisted early in the week, but I've. I've yep. felt happy the last couple of days. Yes, and I agree. Just, you were resistive the first two days in particular, very yeah, resistive. I'm just yeah. wondering if you had anything to add to help. Um, well, just the two areas of the life again, your desire to love others and your desire for God. 
that those po both of those areas are very undeveloped in you. And my suggestion is to have a good look at your desire, your will there. Do you really want to love others or are you waiting for them to love you? It feels to me most of the time at the moment you're waiting for others to love you. And, you, and in fact, you live your life that, like that a lot, like you're waiting for others to love you. And I suggest to you that if you wait for others to love you, you'll spend a long time waiting. There's not many people on the planet who really want to love another person, right? Um, secondly is your desire to love God. It, like if, you, if you entered a relationship with God, which you uh, have definitely have, just like everyone else here, the potential of doing, um, you will actually feel a lot of the feelings that you need to feel, which are all about grief, uh, that you, uh, about your childhood. At this stage, you're not allowing yourself to feel much of those feelings. And as a result, you're sort of almost... You, God's like a long, far-off prospect, you know, something that you haven't considered is even probably worth doing. Um, you, you have an occasional thought of it. Your guide's trying to influence you to have occasional thoughts about it. But at this stage, I feel that if you could... If you, could, if you stay in you, for the next day and a half and you just sit down and you work out your will in those two areas, your desire to love other people rather than waiting for their love and your desire to long for God's love rather than always viewing God as a long way, way off person. That would help you immensely. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Can we go Gary up the back and Thalia down the front? Um, and uh, how much time have I got? I'm not going to have the time to... It's 1.21. Let me just work out how long my presentation is. Um, yeah, I can go for nine more minutes and that's it. Uh, Gary. I just, um, just where I'm at, I feel I might be deluding myself. Yes. So just you know, where I'm at. Yeah. I think what Mary said to you in her presentation to you, I don't, I, there's nothing to add. You, okay. You, in the time I've seen you, we've known each other now for how long? Probably five, good solid five years. Yeah. And in that time I've seen you, there's no desire in you to actually see how you're damaging women. You always think that women are damaging you and you have no desire to see how you're damaging women. Mm. And, and you're damaging women a lot, and yourself as a result, but there's a lot of sexual projection coming out of you. you. And even just sitting down, when I made that comment about you sitting down, who you were sitting down with, you start thinking it's all about you feeling bad about yourself and you putting yourself in a situation that's harmful to you. No, it's not. It's about you wanting to feel like sexually projected other women and get some sexual feelings in return. And, and unfortunately, the only kind of women you're going to attract in this, in this place is, is women who want power over you sexually, which is the kind of women you've had relationships in what I've observed. Mm. The second thing that I notice in you a lot is you do not wish to take personal responsibility for your life. You want somebody else to do it for you. Mm. And, and while you have a hold on to that, it's going to be very, very hard for you to have a relationship with God or, or even desire to love other people. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I'd suggest you work upon. Thanks. Good night. Um, there was down here, Thalia, was it? <clears throat> Three. Just pick up your hand, those who would like to have this interaction. Still, okay. If we go to, to um, Glenda next after this, and uh, sorry, we won't go to Glenda next. If we go, go to Laureline next and then Glenda. Okay. Thalia. Yeah, so. Um I know you and Mary have been quite firm with my addictions right from the beginning yep. in my approaches to you, which has been really good for me to reflect on during the week and, yep. and feel how, you know, this, how wrong it was yep. um, to project this kind of neediness for attention. Um, but I'd like to know more from you in regards to uh, perhaps the reasons for your choice. We don't feel a desire in you for God at this point mm -hmm. at all. And we yeah. don't feel a desire in you to love others. We feel a desire in you to receive things from others, right? So there is a feeling that you want to be loved by others. And, but even with God, there's not even a feeling in you that you want to be loved by God. You want an addiction with God. You want God to sort out your life. You want, you want God to do a whole heap of things for you, but, um, but it's not, not love, right? 
So, so our suggestion to you is to work on those particular issues. So in other words, go back over the presentations for the week again and look at the areas of addictions and facade and look at what you're trying to cover over in your hurt by having these addictions met. Yeah. Every interaction you've had with me has been driven by your addictions. So that should give you a clue as to where to go. Yeah, good day. Well then. Um, I, I'd just like to know where I'm at, thanks. Lorlene, you're, you've become addicted to self-punishment in an avoidance of, of your own hurt. And um, you've become addicted to manipulating men using sort of like the, the facade of I'm a weak woman and I need your assistance to help me because I can't do it for myself type of feeling coming from you. And that's not true. You're actually quite a strong woman who's had quite a lot of, who's done quite a lot of things in her life. But as a result, you have a tendency to give yourself away to everybody in order to get that feeling. And uh, this is something you do with men. You, you're very, you're in an, a, a very strong codependent addiction with men. So my suggestion to you, and because of that, you have no desire for God. You just want the man. You want the man sort out my life, make myself feel happier, make myself feel better, all those kind of things. Does that make sense? Sweetheart, could I add to that? Sorry. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. Go on. Just also, Lorleen, you are in the addiction of self-punishment, but you've become quite demanding and needy with it. And you're not seeing now the sin of what you're placing upon others when you live in that place. So yeah. You want other people to agree with you in your self-punishment. Uh, well, or, we can't to, agree, or to really. cheer you out of or it. Or to cheer or you to out of it, Or to take responsibility for what you're doing and help you out of yeah. it. And all these kinds of things that have really crept in and now it's become quite sort of heavy yeah. your demands. Yeah. Yeah. You're another lady who has a lot... Of, you, most of you women here are very intelligent girls but you've worked out a lot of very manipulative and clever ways of getting away from your emotions, right? And this is not good for you. You need to be a bit more self-reflective about those things. Yeah. Okay. Where was I up to? Glenda, that's right. And Glenda, you're going to have to be my last person. Um, I do agree with your choice. Because yeah. I felt that block towards repentance and forgiveness, but I'm just open for feedback. Sure. Um, if you think about the last two days' presentations, you've gone to sleep in every important presentation, and and you you're you're shutting down any um, you're shutting down any. It, it, there's no desire even to know how to fix the codependent addictions and the and the facade. It's like. It's almost like you give up, like, is that what you feel? Like you just feel like giving up or what is it you feel? These past few months, here I have. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the feeling we feel from you, that you want to give up um, rather than have... See, many, many of you ladies have a very strong angry feeling in you of wanting to give up because things aren't working your way. Right? And that's, you, don't, you don't actually see that as an addiction. But it is. It's, a, it's an addiction to sort of run away. The, the extremity of that addiction is suicide. A person who suicides wants to get out of having to take any personal responsibility for the pain in their life, right? But, but many of you revert to running away, going back to your old life, doing your old things, getting all the th things met because it's the only thing that gives you any satisfaction. You remember one of the reasons why I asked Justin to come up with me was because I could see that his emotions of why he was getting sad on the divine love path, right, was because he wasn't getting most of his addictions met, right? And this is why many of you are quite stagnant, because you're not getting most of your addictions met by being on the path. And so you go back to all of the other ways you got your addictions met. And, and one of these addictions is to run away, run away from facing truth. And that's something we feel that you do quite strongly, run away from facing truth. Yeah. And I did consider not coming. I know that. It was great. I feel it's great that you come. Um, hopefully what we've done with the tools that Mary talked about giving all of you is that it's given you some uh, feeling that you do have control over your life. 
You do have control over your happiness. There are things you can do. There are things, that, but it's going to have to be sincerely done. But there's things that you can do to actually look at yourself and see what's going on in your day-to-day -day life. Does that make sense? Yeah. So hopefully, um, for those of you who even considered not coming, but you came anyway, hopefully you've at least got those tools available to you. Now, if you really are sincere at some point in your future, that you actually use some of those tools in your day-to-day -day life. And that does feel helpful. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully it has been helpful. Um, we, we've tried to do our best in terms of helping you break through some of these things by what, what we've said and done with you this week. We realise that we're not, we don't feel responsible for you, right? So, and, and to be honest, um, if you feel we are responsible, you're way out of line with God's love anyway. You're God's children, just as like I am, and God's responsible for you, just like God's responsible for creating me, and God's doing everything in God's power to help you. It's just that many of you are not sensitive to what God's doing in your day-to-day -day life. So my suggestion is allow yourself to become more sensitive to what's happening. But what we'll do now, um, babe, you wanted to say? I just wanted to add that neither do we neither do we feel any sense of judgment, you know? All of those people who weren't on the list, like honestly, it's just about seeing where you are at in the map. And in the spirit world, you don't get the new thing presented till you deal with what is right there in front of you. And there's many times where I've had to face, as I've shared with you a lot this week, where I'm at on the map. And it's helped me massively, immensely. Like, don't... Well, it's up to you what you do. But if you want to run away and just, like, discard everything, it's all too hard, stuff it, I didn't, you know, all those things, I don't want to face where I'm at on the map, you just, you just let go of the opportunity to actually shift from where you are on the map. So please And don't... there's been many times, hasn't there, where you've run away and... I have. Look, I've run know, away and gone, I, I don't I have face said, no, I don't bit. want to share anything with <laughs> you for the next few months until you sort this issue out, because this issue, to me, is our biggest issue, and if, if this doesn't get sorted, nothing's going to get sorted, so... And often that's the one where there's a lot of fear, that's why we're resisting, you know, and we're going to have to... Like, I had to work through the way my will was currently engaged, and work through enough emotion that my will became engaged in wanting to receive that again. So, you know, this is not about judgment or being hard or any of those things. If you do that, if you go away and judge yourself or feel hard on yourself, you miss the opportunity. So, And you can see from my feedback, right, that I'm not, like, angry or upset with you about it. I'm just trying to give, give you a picture of where everything is for you right at this moment. That's all. And, and what we're hoping to do is through that um, hopefully help you have some breakthroughs of where you need to be. For all of you who are not going to be involved in the rest of the sessions, our suggestion is to go over what you've already learnt from day one. Again, go over it again. Because in amongst that is where you need to be. That's where you need to put your time. That's where you need to put your energy. That's where you need to develop your will. That's, you know, develop your will in those areas. Oh, um, all of you are invited, if you do remain, you all invited, myself and Fab, depending on my voice, because my voice is sort of not too good at the moment, uh, myself and Fab are going to give you a little concert uh, tomorrow after the session in after after dinner tomorrow after dinner and you're all invited to come along to that if you wish does that make sense so so if you do decide to stay then please join us with that as well thanks Smoka. the power presentation that was presented this week is yep. it on the the hard drive that we handed in it is. However, um, I will be uh, doing some final modifications to the PowerPoint presentations and the outlines. So there are outlines and PowerPoint presentations that are currently on your disks that will change to what they'll eventually be next week when we get home. Does that make sense? So in a few weeks' time, if you set up your synchronisation service or something, or you get a copy from them or download them from the website, you'll find that those copies will be slightly different, not largely, but slightly different. Some of them will be to the ones that you currently have on your disks. Yep. And by now, I think we have finished copying all of the disks but one. Is that about right? Is there a... Yep. 
So that's good. Okay. Thanks, guys.